Hello everybody, Valley News Live meteorologist Hutch Johnson with you today for weather class. It's a little later than average, so hopefully you are still able to join me. I know a lot of you uh, kids have been doing your schooling at home. It's really good to have you on board. So uh, again, Valley News Live meteorologist Hutch Johnson joining you from my home. A uh, little later today for two reasons. Number one, with all of our social distancing, number one, we're working from home and a lot of things are closed and my hair has not been cut for over two months, almost three months. So it was getting shaggy. I was getting long haired and uh, had a, uh, our, uh, a, the salon open back up uh, over at City Looks. They do a great job with our hair. And I was able to get in there and they took care of me today. And I feel lightheaded. I lost so much hair. Good to have you on board. Make sure that you uh, sign in and let me know where you're watching from. It looks like Elizabeth uh, is joining us from a Roseau area again. Good to have you, Stephanie, on board. Yes, it's been a rainy, soggy day. But hey, how about that hair? That hair feels good to get a haircut for the first time, get out and um, did the social distancing thing at the hair salon. I was really impressed with how they did that over at City Looks. They had me put on a mask and they were masked up and everything was, was clean and I felt very safe. So that was good to know. Uh, Owen and Shane and Weston are here from West Fargo. Good to have you on board. Hi, everybody. Today's subject is going to be exciting. We're going to talk a lot about the atmosphere and by uh, the time we're done with our talk today, you might understand or you will understand a lot more about why uh, the atmosphere does what it what it does. Uh, it, it has a job and we're going to talk about what exactly that job is and and what makes it go and what makes it stop and and uh, how the atmosphere does its job. So we'll talk about that. Nathan, good to have you. Maryland Canfield from Texas City. Is that in Texas, Maryland? I'm going to guess it is. But sometimes we have Texas cities in other states, so that could be. Uh, Maddie and AJ, good to see you here. Uh, thanks for the uh, up update on the hair. I think it looks good. It feels so good to have the hair cut. I literally was getting to the point where I'd put a hat on and I'd have wings. I could actually fly. Alex, good to see you guys. Okay, today's topics are uh, is exciting. Uh, we're going to go through a couple of things in order here, talking about what sets the atmosphere in motion. We're going to talk about uh, why the atmosphere is in motion and what would make it stop and uh, so it wouldn't be uh, in motion anymore. It is Texas, Maryland says. Well, Maryland, howdy from Fargo, North Dakota. It's a cool and rainy day here. Uh, I hope Texas is doing well. Yesterday, I understand uh, in central Texas, there were some triple digit heat out there. We're going to talk a little bit about the heat differences we have on our planet, and that actually drives our weather. So if you're uh, ready to learn about the weather, let's get started right now. And again, as you sign in, love to see the thumbs up, love to see the, uh, uh, the uh, wow faces. And make sure that if you have a question as we go along, you can type questions in at any time. Phil, good to see you on board here. Thanks for coming to class. Nathan, good to have you on board as well. Here we go. And you're looking at the ocean. Leslie, thanks for the uh, comment on the haircut. Okay, there's the earth. And uh, we're all familiar with that. And through our previous classes, we've talked a little bit about how the equator and the tropics are the areas that get more sun than the rest of the planet they get more direct rays of sun. So if this out of proportion sun is blasting the earth with rays, most of those rays and the most direct rays hit between the tropics of Capricorn and Cancer and near the equator. Jackson from Jamestown, good to have you on board. I got so many awesome pictures from Jamestown. I'll show you one a little later. Grapevine, Texas. Kimberly, good to have you on board from Texas. We're going to talk about weather today, and we're talking about the atmosphere's job. Good to have you on board. All right, so here's the Earth. More direct rays hit the equator than hit any other part of the Earth. So in the tropics, it's warmer. That's no big surprise, weather guy. Tropics. That's why we, when we're from Fargo, we like to travel down south to warm up. Oh, that, that is. That's Pluto up there. Not Goofy. Pluto's up there on my TV. You should watch Valley News Live tonight. You might see different characters pop up from time to time. At any rate, it's warmer near the tropics than it is up here at the poles. Fargo, North Dakota, and much of North Dakota is located at a latitude, and the equator is zero. So if the equator's down here at zero degrees latitude... We live almost at 50 degrees north latitude in North Dakota. 
and that goes from zero at the equator to 90 at the poles. So we're more than halfway up to that pole and polar region. So we get a lot more cold weather here and uh, down to the south, they get warmer weather. So, oh, Sarah Ryland and Steph, Stefan from Minnesota love the classes and I'm really glad that you do. It's fun to do them as well. So I really appreciate that. Thanks, Tim. I appreciate the comment on the Ford. Uh, um, it's, it's that time of year where it's fun to start playing with the toys again. All right, take a look at the planet. More direct rays hit in the tropics, so it gets warmer there. And if you have ever heard the saying that uh, what drives the weather is our sun, that is absolutely right. The sun heats the earth differently in different places. And that's what sets our atmosphere in motion. That makes the whole thing go. So if someone ever asks you on a, on a test or a question, uh, or someone says, hey, what makes the weather happen? It's the sun. The sun uh, causes differences in temperature across our planet. So we can see that here because the more direct rays hit the equatorial region than here. So we get an excess of heat in the tropics all year long. And when we back out and look at the polar regions, less direct radiation hits there. So we have a reduced amount of heat there. And I like to call that a lack of balminess. There's a lack of balm going on in the, uh, the, the poles. So the North Pole and South Pole both are cold places. So our planet, because it is the way it is, because it is the way it uh, is, has colder pools of air at both poles and warmer air near the tropics. So the sun and the difference of the amount of energy that arrives at the surface of the earth, the sun causes temperature differences. That's number one. The sun causes temperature differences at different places on our planet. Maddie from Jamestown, good to have you on board. Doug, glad to have you on board. Thanks for waving. It's going great today. Teresa, thanks for asking. We sure did need the rain, and my lawn is already greener this morning than it was last night. Amazing. Connie, good to have you on board. One thing, when we have a temperature difference caused by the sun, okay, because the sun's more direct rays hit the uh, tropics and it gets cooler at the poles, that causes pressure differences between these locations too. So temperature differences cause pressure differences. And we've talked in Hutch's class before, pressure difference is what causes the wind to blow. So that sets the atmosphere in motion. So when Hutch just said, well, it's the sun that changes our weather. That's exactly right. The sun sets our weather in motion because the sun heats the earth differently at different places. That causes temperature differences. Temperature differences cause pressure differences. Pressure is what causes the air molecules to want to move. That's wind. And so sun causes the wind and that causes storms. And that causes air with different temperatures to mix up. So when we look at this a little bit closer, the next graphic I have uh, prepared for you is this, that, that this difference set up by the temperature differences caused by the sun sets the atmosphere in motion. And that's what makes weather work. The sun makes the weather. The sun makes the weather work. Now, oh, I, I think we can skip this fall equinox part here. The tropics have an excess in heat all year. And here's another fun graphic. Let's take a look at this one. So the atmosphere is set in motion between the poles up here and down here and the equator equatorial region or tropics. Now, this is a very simplified version, but we have the cold air from the poles flowing southward towards the equator to be warmed and the warm air northward toward the poles to bring some of that warmth here, some of the excess warmth up north. So in this oversimplified version of our atmosphere, we see that it's this temperature difference that really uh, sets up the atmosphere's motion. So, Sue asked if we can give a shout out to the James River Humane Society. I love all humane societies, uh, so it's not animal rescue. And uh, I, I say that, and I'm going to move the camera right now because here's my little animal rescue. You've all seen him before if you've looked at Hutch's classes. Pedro, Pedro, hi, that's Pedro. Pedro is hanging out with Dad here in the studio at the house. Pedro's my rescue puppy. I got him from the area. So if you have uh, uh, love for animals and you want to get an animal, a rescue is a perfect place to go and rescue an animal. What's the sun doing on the other side of the earth when it turns uh, and we are dark? Well, 
That's a great, a great question. If the sun is always over here on this graphic and the earth is spinning around its axis, okay, then the sun isn't doing anything different. We just get dark. And so the dark side of the earth is just in the shadow of the sun and that's what makes it dark. So it's, it, the sun isn't doing anything different on the other side. Good question though. Great question. So the sun creates our weather because it creates temperature differences, which create pressure differences, which cause the wind to, w wind to start turning and that makes storms. Um, you're gonna get tired of seeing our equinox graphic here, but I'm gonna sneak back over and take another look at this. And this graphic says, so the atmosphere's job is to move and mix the air until the temperature is equal at all places. I spelled places wrong. I apologize for that. Okay, so on our planet, the atmosphere is set in motion by temperature differences, and it would stop being in motion when all the temperature is equal everywhere. So if we looked at the Earth and the temperature was equal everywhere, there would be no temperature difference, there'd be no pressure difference, and there'd be no wind, and there'd be no storms, and there'd be no mixing in our atmosphere. So this is what the whole point of the class was today, is to describe that the atmosphere is doing a job all the time, and it's trying to bring about this, this thing we call thermal equilibrium. So if the North Pole and the South Pole and the equator area or the tropics were all the same temperature, We would have quiet weather. There'd be no wind. Uh, we wouldn't have stormy weather. It's the air in motion, by the way, that causes the storms too. So as we go through the process of a, a stormy day in North Dakota, we see a lot of great things. Take a look at this picture. Speaking of Jamestown, I got some viewers in the James River Valley and the James River Humane Society, Sue. Uh, uh, Tim Haas and family out there in the uh, Valley City, North of Valley City area. This was yesterday, and I cannot tell you how many pictures we got at the station of this red, red sun, and this was in the morning. So the sky was on fire first thing in the morning. It was raining. I saw red rainbows. We had all kinds of fantastic, fantastic shots from the area, and it rained all day yesterday out in your area, and now it's been raining for over a day here in the valley, and it is really getting uh, soggy around here, but we needed it to get things greened up and growing again for the spring season. Um, so, at any rate, beautiful pictures from the James River Valley. Thanks, Jim, for watching. Jen, I see your question. I'll see if I can address that right now real quick. What does a polar vortex do? A polar vortex, uh, let me go back to this graphic real quickly, um, is just, it's a cold pool of air that's kind of spinning. So it, it forms up here by the pole and it's always up there and it's always spinning around, okay? And that cold pool of air sometimes makes its way and covers a larger chunk of the, the Northern Hemisphere if we're talking about up here where we live. So sometimes the polar vortex spins and some of those cold chunks of air push their way southward into uh, the United States from Northern Canada. So when people talk about the polar vortex, it is a way for that cold, nasty air up near the Arctic Circle, way up there where the air never gets any sun all winter long, comes down and pays us a visit. And that's not my favorite weather. <laughs> I don't know if it's yours, but it ain't Hutch's. Let's put what we've learned today about the atmosphere to practical use. You've learned that the sun heats up the earth in different rates at different places. The poles, they don't get as much sun. They don't get as much direct sunlight either. And therefore they're colder. The tropics are warmer. That sets up a temperature difference, that's one. The temperature difference causes a pressure difference between those locations, that's two. Number three, the pressure difference drives the wind. That's what makes wind move. And when we have moving wind, we can create this. And here's a look at what's going on right now today across our nation. So if you're watching in Texas, it's mighty stormy down and was last night in the northeast corner of Texas near Frisco, near Dallas, Fort Worth. Those storms uh, kind of fizzled out as we went through the night. And now Texas is once again going to be burning up. It looks probably pretty hot there, although a little cool front may have blasted through, maybe not as hot. Look at our area. It's been raining for over a day. 
and there's this spiraling going on. That is a storm system. So when Hutch draws the weather map, the weather map for today might look something like this, okay? A low pressure system is a storm. It is a mid-latitude cyclone or a storm. Anytime you see an L, it's a storm. Some storms are weak. Some storms are strong, okay? Um, but this is a, a typical, what we call mid-latitude, where we live, mid-latitude uh, cyclone or storm. This storm can have fronts attached to it. Those fronts just define boundaries between cold air, warm air, and the like. And it causes the air to spin around the storm in a counterclockwise fashion. Um, that's another topic for another day. But here is what we've been talking about today. Cold air, cold air back here behind the cold front is getting mixed up with warm air, okay, down south. So the cold air up north by Billings is going all the way down south into Texas today. Frisco should be cooling off a little bit. The panhandle of Texas, cooling off a little bit. The warm airs here in Louisiana and the Gulf Coast states, it wants to move north. And when it moves north, it's ramming into this cool air up here and it's causing clouds and showers and rain all across our region. That is a storm, okay? For us, it hasn't been particularly stormy. We haven't had 100 mile per hour winds. It's not a hurricane by any stretch of the imagination, but it's causing rain. And it's been raining here for more than 24 hours and we have a lot of it. So this storm is set in motion, the wind, because of the difference in temperatures. As this storm progresses, it's going to decay and get weaker because it's going to have mixed the warm air with the cool and cold air, and it's going to bring this whole area to not an exact equal temperature, but a lot more equal than it was. So we had temperatures around 100 plus degrees in Texas yesterday. They're cooling off a little bit, and things are getting a little better and cooler there. So, Here's a look at temperature contours. The colors represent the warm air in our, in, around our country today. And we see the cooler air up north, the cold air up in Canada. And that cool air is being brought down into Texas where the hundreds are gone today, it looks like. Not, not there yet, okay? Uh, the warmer warm air is up down here in the Gulf Coast states from Houston, Texas. Uh, Zach, good to have you from Detroit Lakes. So that is what the topic today was. Now, because of today's weather, today is Tuesday, there is a risk along that boundary where we have the cold air mixing with the warm air here by Atlanta, northern parts of Georgia, the Carolinas into uh, Tennessee. Uh, we're going to have a chance of some thunderstorms there today, a slight risk of very strong thunderstorms north of Atlanta today. So that's what we're looking at. In our area, we could have maybe one or two rumbles of thunder. That's what the green is. Garden variety thunderstorms that don't uh, likely look severe. Our weather is so exciting. And it's interesting to me. I'm a meteorologist. I study it all the time. 70s and 80s, Kimberly says. And you're in Texas, right? Is that right? So uh, maybe it's really cooled off quite a bit. Yesterday, I think I saw triple digits in central and northern Texas. So uh, the weather interests me. We see a lot of interesting weather where we live in the United States, whether you live in North Dakota or Texas, whether you live on the West Coast or the East Coast. The United States is in the mid-latitudes between the equator and the tropical region and the polar region up here. We're right in the middle, and that's where all of the atmosphere's work is done. That's where all of the mixing of these air masses are done. That is where all of the job of the atmosphere takes place, right here. When a storm moves through the nation's midsection, these storms swirl the air together, mixing warm, cold, cool air all together to try to bring around and bring about some sort of equilibrium with our temperature to make everybody's uh, temperatures more comfortable. Kimberly, glad you have cooled off a little bit. We would love to have some 70s and 80s up here, but our turn is coming soon. Thank you all for joining me in class. If you do have questions about the atmosphere or questions about weather, leave them here. I'll try to uh, follow up uh, with your comments. I really, really appreciate you sharing in the comments section. If you know a friend, uh, a relative who might enjoy the class, have them uh, uh, go ahead and, and tag them in the comments below so they can see the class too. We'd love to have them for our Thursday session and Thursday class. So that'll be at two. Today's was delayed because Hutch had a, a haircut appointment that got kind of pushed to a different time. So 
I uh, had to get there and get my hairs cut and my head lightened. I'm feeling lightheaded. Jill, thanks for coming. Kimberly, thanks for watching from Texas, and thanks for the Texas report. Loved having all of you around today. Uh, it is uh, about time that I wrap up. I'll watch for another second or two uh, about our um, uh, any questions or whatnot. And while we're doing that, while I'm waiting for a couple more questions, I'm getting a lot of uh, requests for classes on hurricanes. So Hutch will do a class on hurricanes sometime soon. Uh, it's not this Thursday, but we will cover that. Let's go ahead. I'm glad that you like the topic, Tim. Let's zoom in and take a look at our area. When is the rain going to stop for Fargo, North Dakota? For Grand Forks, North Dakota, it's still green on Hutch's radar. Remember the thunderstorm chances I was talking about? Look out by Rapid City now this afternoon. So it's starting to get a little bit on the stormy side there with a few rumbles of thunder for their forecast. But for us, it's just garden variety, ordinary showers of rain that continue to swirl around our area and they do not look like they're going away. So I think it's going to stay rainy at least for the next few hours hours in Fargo and in Valley City and in the Jamestown area. Um, things were fairly dry today in central Minnesota. Um, this is slowly going to dry up and it's really been slow this process. So another another soggy evening here. I don't think by time you're uh, wanting to do dinner it's going to be all dried up for your barbecues tonight but tomorrow looks a lot gooder as I like to say. Um, I know that isn't correct grammar, so you, I know that's a class that, well, let's just say this. I always like to say Hutch was a lot gooder at math and science than I was at grammar and English, and that's why I'm a meteorologist. TJ, I was asking, unrelated to weather, wondering what happened in Moorhead. Oh, I don't know. Huge police presence, and they got the dogs out. TJ, I don't know. I'm in my basement. Uh, 20th Street and 14th Avenue. Uh, I don't know for sure. I have not heard, but um, our news department is probably looking into it if it's a huge presence. Nathan, good to have you on board. A class on thunderstorms, Maddie. That sounds real good. Let me take a second too, while I have you on board, Maddie, uh, to go ahead and point out where this is. Um, Hutch has done a lot of these classes since the uh, uh, school was kind of uh, distance learning style. And so if you were to go to valleynewslive.com, that's our website. Sue, if you would take Maddie to valleynewslive.com and click on the weather button up here, the weather link, okay? If you click on the weather link, right up here on the right side, you see Hutch's weather class, that blue bar. You just click there. So go to valleynewslive.com, click on weather, and click on Hutch's weather class. And if you click on that, it will take you to the most recent class. This would have been last week's. And you see this menu right up here, one of 15. There's 15 classes posted. I've already done 15 classes. Today's 16. Man, this has been fun. Maddie, you're going to find a class on thunderstorms and thunderstorm safety and different things in here. We have done a class on that, on lightning as well. So um, scroll through and see if you see a class on thunderstorms. Well, we've had one on tornadoes. We've had one on lightning. Uh, we, As a result of those two classes, we talked a lot about thunderstorms. Maddie, I think you would really be interested in those classes. So that's how you can find classes. And our website, I'll take one more minute while I have you. If you click on weather, there's some really cool stuff. Our app, the Valley News Live weather app, is very good for keeping up-to-date information on your phone with you all the time about the weather. And on our website, you can also access similar information on the interactive radar here. Remember how Hutch's fancy on the news at night has radar on it. You can look at the same radar information by logging on to valleynewslive.com, going to our weather page, and going to our interactive radar. There's the same green I was just showing you. You can loop it by clicking on the play button down here. Make sure it's set to past information right here in the lower left hand side and hit the play button and it will play about the last uh, hour or so oh no since 9 30 this morning so several hours worth of radar uh data and it's showing you how the rain has not moved a lick since 9 30 this morning john pedro says goodbye and glad that you could join us today he's gonna go ahead and commence taking his nap so at any rate hope to see you on on thursday for our class 
Um, we're going to talk about more weather-related stuff on Thursday. That'll be fun. We'll come up with some topics for you uh, to study, but I like your suggestions on thunderstorms and on hurricanes. We'll keep those in mind. Keep the questions coming. Please do your best to stay well, and I uh, hope to see you on Valley News Live tonight. Uh, again, I'd also appreciate uh, likes or comments here, or you can go to Facebook and look for my page, and I'd love to have you like the Hutch VNL page there as well. I do a lot of weather posting. I share a lot of your pictures that have been uploaded to our website. So AJ is asking if you think hurricanes or tsunamis are more frightening. Ooh, that's a very good one. I think tsunamis are more frightening. That's my personal opinion. Um, hurricanes, you always see people reporting from hurricanes, and the strongest of hurricanes could be very, very scary. Um, if you're in a, uh, a, a Category 5 storm, um, it, it, it would be very frightening. So I can't say that hurricanes aren't, but tsunamis, there's just no way to really know they're coming. There is a warning system, but we don't always know that they're coming. And when we want to respond, if we're by the coast where the tsunami is happening, I think that we have very little that we can do except seek higher ground. So that's what scares Hutch. I think more uh, it would be the tsunamis. Same. That's a great question. What scares you the most? Volcanoes or earthquakes? They're kind of related. Um, when I was a kid growing up in the 80s, uh, Mount St. Helens blew up. I, do you all remember Mount St. Helens, Okay, the state of Washington? And where I lived in Montana, we were buried in ash. Our cars were covered in ash. And we, back then, had to wear face masks to go to school. Just like today, kids. Just like today, when you're wearing face masks to go out. Now that I think about it, we were uh, advised to wear face masks to school. And if you didn't have one, you could put your shirt up over your nose or put a bandana on. And so a lot of my classmates and myself were doing bandanas and wearing face masks just so we could go to school because there was volcanic ash falling through the sky like snow. It covered our cars in Billings, Montana, um, not with inches, but with a good half inch or, or so of, of ash, I recall. And everything was volcanic ash everywhere. It looked like it snowed. Thank you for joining class today. I'm going to get you back off to your activities. It's been our half hour. Have a wonderful day. The rain will go away, but not until morning. By morning, we should start to see a little bit more sun. It'll be cool still tomorrow, but I think we'll break out and start seeing some sunshine. And with all this rain, you know what that means. It means green. All right. So things should green up. The fire danger should go down. So, all right. Uh, Kimberly was there when it went off the second time. Yeah. Oh, AJ is more afraid of tsunamis and is, uh, he said he's more afraid of volcanoes than of earthquakes. And I think that's true. I mean, volcanoes, if you're by one, there's just not much you can do uh, if you're right next to one. Uh, same with an earthquake. If you're in one, there's not much you can do, but hope it's not really bad. Jen, you remember Mount St. Helens. Good. All right, you all, have a wonderful day. I got to get ready for our show tonight. I'm going to do a little forecasting. Adair, I'm going to give you a wave. Thanks for waving at me. I appreciate all of you for taking the time to join with the class, and I hope you're learning things. I hope it's making science a little bit fun. I think it's been a while since Hutch has done an experiment, so I'll see if I can work an experiment into Thursday's class, uh, if I possibly can. Something fun that you can do to uh, reinforce that learning that we do. Until next time, here's my mini snota cup. Mini snota, it's backwards. Mini snota. And uh, no snow in the forecast today for Fargo. That's good. Bye. Have a great day. We'll see you on Valley News Live. Thanks for joining the class.